Hi, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. My name's Mark and I tinker with bikes and occasionally get to ride them too. Today's build is one I've had on the cards for years. Seriously, I actually picked this bike up in 2017. It was meant to be one of those long term projects, a full restoration. I spent years occasionally gathering parts for the proper build and then it finally began. But before I go on any further, this is a resto mod, not a restoration. Plans change and while I'd love to have built a beautifully restored 60s bike, I just don't think it would have got the use it deserved. A resto mod gives an old bike some new life with some modern parts and makes the ride more enjoyable. This bike has gone through quite the change and I'm happy with the outcome. So sit back, grab a brew and enjoy the build. So let's catch up. In the last video I set about restoring the frame and starting the build. I had the frame and fork media blasted back to bare metal and then began work on the paint. It's one of the bikes I really started to spend more time on and developing my spraying technique, but still, I messed up. I left the frame out to dry for a couple of weeks and then transferred it to the garage where I clamped the tube temporarily in my stand. The paint was apparently still soft so the cloth I had used to protect the paint actually damaged it. I was gutted. I'd spent so long getting the paint right that the project just got put on hold for a while before I eventually repaired the paint. Then it came time to build the bike. All the old components were clean and ready to fit but again it didn't go to plan. The bottom bracket, a Rally 26 30 inch special, didn't fit properly. The non-drive side cup wound in the frame too much, meaning the axle was probably too short, but the bearings were also dragging or something. Then I found out the Benelux front delay derailleur that I bought didn't actually work with this frame. And then, to stop it off, after fitting my freshly built wheels, I found the frame was bent. Yep, I'd actually missed that at the start. After that frustrating day, the bike was hung up again while I ordered some more parts and reassessed the situation. And that's how we get to hit. With all the setbacks and the bottom bracket still causing me some annoyance, I just decided to go for a resto mod. The frame will be straightened, the bottom bracket will be converted and mud and parts fitted. I'll try and explain the process as I go along, but if you have any questions, ask away in the comments. If you want any of the bike specs too, that's in the description. Okay? On with the build. First up, straightening out that rear end. When I originally picked up the bike, it came with a single speed wheel set, which are generally around the 110mm width. This bike was specced with a 5 speed in most cases, though, so it should have been 120mm. One side of the frame had been bent in slightly, but that's not too much of a problem with steel. Steel is quite forgiving to a point. You can bend it back, but it will, of course, weaken the material slightly. I need to take this a step further and cold set the dropouts to 130mm to fit a modern wheel set. It's all perfectly doable, it just takes a bit of patience to get right. Because my frame was bent, I did all the work using the frame alignment gauge as leverage to manipulate the rear triangle. If your frame is straight, close. a bit of threaded rod and some nuts and spanners is all that's usually needed to cold set a frame. After the frame width was set, I aligned the dropouts too. So here's an old clip for that for reference. Now a bit of tinkering with the seat post. I wanted to fit a modern aluminium post to add some more length, make it look better and to make use of the simple microjust clamp system. Being an old gas pipe steel frame, the tolerances aren't the best, so the 25.4mm seat post was struggling to fit. There was a small burr or something on the top tube join, so to clear it up I gave it a good go with a file and a wire brush drill attachment. The inside of the tube is now much cleaner, but it's still a tight fit. A little bit of grease goes a long way though, especially when steel and aluminium mix. Then it's time to get the bike in the stand and fit the classic Brooks B17. Oh, 
I mean, this build had to have a Brooks. Now for the big modification, the bottom bracket. Back in the 60s, Rally, being the huge company that it was, were using a unique standard for their bike parts. While most of the world were settling with 24 threads per inch, except for maybe France and Italy, Rally were using 26 threads per inch. Not only that, but instead of using a 68mm shell, they used a 71mm. This means if you ever want to upgrade your older Rally, it gets very annoying. It's honestly not too difficult to convert the bottom bracket, but the tools are very expensive and by recutting the threads, you're effectively making them weaker. It's probably not a job for everyone, so if you're thinking of doing this, be careful. I'm starting the process by re-threading the bottom bracket shell. I'm using a cyclist tool and, well, it's basically cutting new 24 threads per inch threads over the old ones. Of course, it's important these threads are parallel so the tool locks into itself so the threads are cut properly. Always use plenty of lubricant too. Next is the shell resizing and this is where tools get very expensive. They're worth their weight in gold, but damn. Technically, this is a tool for facing the shell to provide a smooth, flat surface for the BB cups to lock down to, but it can also be used to correct Rally's past mistakes. Uh, I mean, resize shells. Guide bushes thread into the bottom bracket and then the cutter slides in. The cutter cuts in a clockwise direction and more tension is added by tightening the screw on the opposite side. Thus, cutting more. Go slow and use lots of lubricant and never turn the cutter anti-clockwise. I only had to remove three millimeters in total, 1.5 mil per side, but it took some time to get right. When I was happy with it, I cleaned everything down, greased everything up and installed the new cartridge button bracket. Happy days. For the drive train, I decided to use a 1993 Shimano Dior LX 3x7 setup. I think it gives a much more versatile range while maintaining a classic look. For this particular crank set, I always grease up the axle because I've had to fight a fair few in the past. Ooh, that's really good. I also 3D printed a reducer for the front derailleur. The only one I had in stock was for a 31.8mm frame, so this brings it down nicely to match the old 28.6mm standard. On the rear, the frame clearly didn't come with a hanger, so I rummaged through my spares and found an old One, adapter. Two, this just slides into the dropouts and allows you to run a derailleur of your choice. Yeah, pretty much One, two, five. Of course, I made sure this was straight before bolting on the derailleur though. Torvi, break. Torvi, where are you? Come here. They're gonna wanna see you. Yeah. Even if you're not in focus. Meow. Mm Back to the bike, and I'm staring at the bars I've put on. I wanted to maintain the classic look, so used the old steel quill stem I had bought, along with some period maze bend handlebars. 
I'd also fitted some Microshift 3x7 brifters in the classic position too, but something just didn't look right. It turns out the stem was a Friday afternoon job, and by that I mean the handlebar clamp had been welded on the wang. It was weirdly offset to one side slightly and set at an angle, so the bars always look wonky. That wouldn't do, so I bought a generic new road stem and a classic bend handlebar to go on the bike. With it being a classic style, I also set the brifters to a classic position, and by that I mean so the brake levers are level with the bottom of the bars. I don't find it the comfiest, but the internet loves it. Once everything was in position, I finished off the bars with some light blue Dida bar tape to complement the head tube. I haven't wrapped any bars in a while, but it went surprisingly smoothly, I think. And um, before I forget, the brakes and wheels. I'm sure I mentioned it earlier, but for this build I'm using a 700c wheel set. This bike was designed for use with 27 inch wheel set. Well, what's the difference then Mark? Good question. The older 27 inch wheels, which already ran long reach brakes, have a bead seat diameter for the tyres of 630mm. Modern 700C wheels run a tyre that measures 622mm. That's only an 8mm difference, or 4mm if you're thinking of brake drop, but it can sometimes throw up problems. For me, the old calipers would have just about worked, but I wanted to use something stronger and more reliable. So I found some extra long reach Tektro calipers and bolted them on. I say bolted too because this old frame doesn't take the newer recess nuts, so that's something to look out for. And lastly, on the subject of wheels, I ended up converting the rear axle to a nutted axle. On a few spins up and down the road, I was easily able to pull the rear wheel out of the dropouts with the quick release. Okay, kid. I'm never yeah, I'm a fan of that, too. so I switched over to the solid axle and all has been okay. well since. No footage of that unfortunately, but hey, it's time for some ride shots and the final summary. Okay.
So, while it was never my original plan for the bike, I love how it turned out. 60 years after it was originally sold, it lives on. Yes, I know it would have been beautiful to see it in its original guise, but for versatility and comfort, the Resto Mod takes the win here. The wide 38C tyres just about fit in the frame with a bit of dimpling on the chainstays, but they jump transform the ride and make it so comfy with the triple seven speed. You've got all the gears you need. The biggest thing for me though was learning through painting and modifying the frame. It's something extra in the memory bank and this is what it's all about right? Learning new things and enjoying new bikes. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.